Divorce lawyers of Reddit, what's the worst way you've seen someone frick over their spouse? Used to be a secretary for a family law solicitor. Had this one divorce case where the wife was a teacher of 30 plus years and had a very nice pension. In the divorce settlement it was decided somehow that the pension would be considered as a marital asset and the husband was entitled to 40%. He wanted the money right away and so she had to cash in her pension so to speak and had to have a reduced amount. The husband ended up getting around £20,000. He was an alcoholic, wasted the money and drank himself to death within 2 years of receiving the money. My mom showed up to the final meeting for my parents divorce and her last request was to trade cars. My dad had a car about a year newer. She had never driven it and my dad drove 30 miles for work while she drove 3. It was such an odd request, especially since he had given up on most of it. A lawyer acted off during the conversation and my dad's lawyer said heck no. A few days later my dad gets home to a message from his lawyer. He found out that mom's car had died needed a new transmission and she failed to mention that when she offered up the trade. Not the worst, but really freaking shady. Sort of reminds me how in my divorce my ex asked if he could have the king size bed that my parents bought us for Christmas because he and his mistress would need a bigger bed to sleep in than I would on my own. SMH. A former co-worker and his wife had split up. Among other things, she took all of his belts from the house. He showed up for work with an ethernet cable tied around his waist because he didn't have any belts. We worked an early shift so there weren't any stores open before he had to get to work. Sounds like a waste of potential bandwidth. I'm a lawyer but not a divorce lawyer. My sister-in-law is me divorcing my brother after 30 plus years of marriage. She's met someone else, so far so normal. It happens, right? The thing that destroyed him is her emptying their son's savings account which my parents, very far from well off, have paid into once a month for years. That's his uni fund wiped out. I don't know about fricking over your spouse but it's the one betrayal my brother can't come to terms with. Obligatory, not a lawyer but, I used to work for the security company, the big one. I had a customer call in and request to have her current deactivation code set as her panic code. A panic code gives the appearance of deactivating the system, but sends a super high priority alarm signal to the monitoring company. This feature exists in case someone puts a gun to your head and demands that you disarm your system. So, if he husband did come by while she was away, violating a court order by my understanding, the cops were gonna show up real frickin' fast. That's actually quite clever, and unlike me out of this thread not even shady as it supports the court order. My mom works in a trustee's office in KS. She once saw a divorce case between a soldier and a dependa. The soldier elected not to get a lawyer and handled it on his own. He specified that he would pay alimony but did not specify that it would stop when she remarried to another soldier. Moral, lawyer up if you divorce. So she's still a dependa then, only now she gets money from two idiots. Ian all, but I have worked for a lawyer who worked divorces. This was his favorite case. Guy was making 150k dollars a year, gets a Thai mail order bride, has three kids, dude has an affair, and now decides that he doesn't want to free on board wife and mixed race kids and initiates a divorce. The woman's only priority is to have custody of the kids, so against her attorney's advice, she's willing to take a deal where she takes a car and gets $1,200 in child support, no spousal support, and $3,000 lump sum from their joint account so she can rent an apartment. There's zero chance that he actually wants custody of the children because he is already shacked up with the girl he's having an affair with. She wanted full custody so bad that she was willing to live with three kids in a modest 2BD apartment and pull the kids out of expensive extracurricular activities they were doing to economize, as well as getting a crappy survival typo job after being nothing but a housewife since coming to US. One of the kids has some talent in an Olympics event, to the level where she was getting professional coaching lessons. The husband takes it to the front of the judge against the advice of his own attorney, who tells him that he's nuts to turn this down, because he doesn't want to give her 3k dollars, 
and figures that the judge will decide between what she wants and what he wants, not realizing that there's a formula based on income judges used to determine child support payment support at the court. The judge awards the wife the 3k dollars lump sum and $1,700 child support for each kid. So because he didn't want to give his ex-wife 3k dollars so his kids could have a place to live, about 50% of his take home pay is going to his ex for the next 10 plus years. The attorney I worked with was a hard ass about money who never did anything for free but this was the one case where he represented the woman for just a nominal fee because he had a justice boner. When I got divorced, my alcoholic wife of 18 years had started another affair, this time with her addictions counselor, my lawyer and I laid a trap for them. Just in case you don't know, intimate relations between a counselor and patient are very frowned upon by the regulatory bodies. And I was more than p after putting her through rehab. $25k which I didn't have to do, only to have her fall back into her old behavior. Shortly before the divorce was finalized I filed a complaint with the state body licensing health professions. Knowing they were in some peril because of their unprofessional relationship, I had already gotten him fired. She had backed off her exorbitant demands. I paid her a very modest settlement, kept the house, got custody of the three tweenage kids, plus got child support. A lawyer naturally included a clause in the divorce where I had to agree to not say anything negative about her lover and their relationship. But the lawyer fricked up and never asked if I had already filed charges and thus didn't didn't require me to rescind them. The lawyer had assumed I was just bad mouthing them to neighbors and friends. And it never occurred to the lawyer that we were doing much more. When the board of health professions responded to my complaint shortly after the divorce was finalized I told them that it would take a subpoena to get me to testify. A subpoena trumps a divorce settlement. They were happy to oblige. They stripped his license and placed him on a register of sanctioned health professionals. He never worked again. They were broken a handful of years and she divorced him when the money ran out. In the interim his mother had died leaving fair sized estate. So it took longer than I expected. Oh. And the frosting on the cake was that his wife and I traded notes. Notably hotel receipts from the time of their affair. That helped each of us in our respective divorces. Justice was served. Mental health therapist and addictions counselor here. Good for you for reporting that frick to the board. A wife negotiated like a biatch possessed for custody of the couple's dog, which the husband, my client, adored. We negotiated the husband's visitation rights for the life of the dog, so she had a vet put the dog down a week after the divorce was final. If that story is true, that woman is evil, killing an innocent animal to get back at their ex. Not a lawyer but this is the history of my house and property. The house used to be owned by a very successful businessman. The property is gorgeous. It overlooks a river and marsh. Backed up by thousands of acres of forest and untouched beauty in Wisconsin. Back about 20 years ago the wife and husband got into a bitter divorce. The wife loved the property. It's beautiful. She loved the river and birds and all the nature around it. So what did the husband do? He, as the owner of the property, deeded it all to nature preserve in the state. Something like 5,000 acres of new public land were created. We the people won. But she lost big time. My house is the only one on the river in that area but there is now tons of public access points and we all enjoy sharing the land with our community. I definitely expected you to say he cleared out the land because she liked the nature. Actual outcome was much better. I'm sitting in family court right now. I'm a public defender handling some contempt issues but I have to sit through all the divorce and custody stuff before my cases get called. I just want to say thank you to all of the family lawyers who deal with this crap. I can't even handle watching it. I'll take the horrible crime all day to avoid divorce and custody stuff. As a public defender, I'm sure you've heard this one before. Criminal court is where you go to see bad people on their best behavior. Family court is where you go to see good people on their worst behavior. Not a lawyer, but get to deal with the outcome all the time. Client and her ex-husband owned a successful renovation company. Marital issues happen. They decide to divorce. Look at money that is in the banks. Value of the company based on its past. Value of the house. Make an agreement that she gets the company and house. He walks away with the ready cash. He takes off for a sunny place to start his life again. Turns out husband had been planning to leave her for a while, 
He stopped paying the vendors and the payroll taxes, which is where the money in the bank accounts originally came from. Company has been existing on credit for over 6 months while he emptied the bank accounts. Employees paychecks start bouncing within weeks of him leaving so they quit. Jobs are not getting finished so customers demand refunds. Within 12 months she is looking for someone to buy the home in a short sale just to get enough cash to close out the payroll accounts before declaring bankruptcy. That's an awful thing to do to your employees. Obligatory not a lawyer but, basically what was done to my wife's sister by her, now ex, husband. He pretty much just drug his feet on everything to make the divorce take as long as possible. He had a good job making $60k year and she had a home daycare making about $20k year. He bled her dry and lawyer's fees. Ian all, but my mom's best friend is a family lawyer. A husband and a wife were having a very acrimonious separation. If I remember correctly, he was very successful, and she was going after him for an immense amount of money. She happened to be a multi-prize winning gardener. We're talking about an absolutely exceptional collection of rare and gorgeous flowers, shrubs, the works. After an unsatisfactory development in their divorce proceedings, she came home to find that her husband had ridden their lawnmower over her entire garden, shredding every last stem and leaf into bits. Not a lawyer but... Hopefully someone else remembers and can help me link. I remember seeing a post about this on our pro revenge maybe? Anyway, husband has a very nice job. Company exec. Six figures type of job. Wife is upset that her lifestyle will have to change after they get a divorce. A lawyer sets up a settlement where the wife is entitled to 25% of the husband's income. Kicker is that the lawyer did not specify which job or any specific amount. Just a percentage. Husband knew he had enough in savings and assets that his income wouldn't be a huge deal. So now he happily works minimum wage at sports goods store and she gets a fourth of that. Don't do this kind of work anymore. But honestly, using the kids as weapons during the case. The kids are the only ones who have absolutely no responsibility for the situation. Both adults, to some degree and at some time, made the decisions that brought them to where they are. Also see plenty of incompetence on property settlements. Ask questions and demand inventories. People of Reddit might justifiably end up with a lot of money for your simple efforts on that front. P.S. This is not legal advice and you should consult a family lawyer in your jurisdiction if you have additional questions. Wasn't there a story on here once about a guy who gifted his house to a friend to prevent his wife getting a share of the sale proceeds, then the friend refused to give it back? I'm guessing that's a bunch of BS anyway. Judges aren't idiots. They'll see what you tried to do and claw it back. My uncle tried that with my aunt. He bought and gifted his son, her stepson, a town home. Judge saw it and went nope. That's half hers. Pay up. A girl and her mother hired a pie who obtained pictures of her husband and his boss cheating on their spouses in the home of a government official who had been accepting their bids for contract work with the state for years. The photographs also showed them drinking and driving in the company vehicles. By agreeing not to receive alimony, she was able to raid the heck out of savings, retirement, and got debt paid off as well as a general lump sum of cash up front. But then, after the settlement the pictures of their highly illegal activities were sent to the company owners who promptly fired his manager for wild impropriety and drinking on the job and had the ex. Husband submit his resignation for the same thing. The government official also lost her job which meant her employee who the husband was sleeping with also lost her job. So the dude got ruined and she made bank. She also got out of a very unhappy marriage, guilt free whereas beforehand she felt obligated to remain in a very abusive relationship due to religious hang ups. The thing is, she has to be one of the sweetest girls I know. But man, does she know how to revenge? Not to be one of those people. But I feel like if the genders were swapped in this story, you would have happier comments. Didn't hear it from a lawyer, but heard it from a guy who buys storage lockers. There was this lady who was going through a nasty divorce. Her husband had all of her possessions moved into a storage locker. He quit paying for the storage locker and conveniently failed to tell his ex-wife that it wasn't being paid for any longer. 
My buddy who buys storage lockers said that he saw the lady showing up with police officers in tears at the auction sale after someone else had already purchased the locker with the police telling her there was nothing they could do, that this is a civil case and she would have to pursue it through the courts. In other words, someone else had just purchased all of her life's belongings and memories for pennies on the dollar. Snippet of an old post of mine. She fights and fights and will not grant the divorce easily. So I do the most sinister thing I can do I frick her like she fricked that guy. I told her she can keep the house no issue. She agrees. I bought the house for 323k back when the market was booming. This divorce happened during the recession. The house was valued at 156k I walked away from it smiling. I knew she couldn't live up to the lifestyle I was giving her. She started falling behind on her payments. Her SUV got repoed. The house was in foreclosure. While I on the other hand went down the road and bought a house worth 500k when the market was high for 212k when the market bubble had blown. TL doctor. Walked away from a house during the recession let her go into debt while I went down the street to purchase a bigger house for less cost of the house I walked away from. Economic savagery. What's the one where the ex-wife puts the shrimp bits in the curtain rods and then ends up getting the house when the move due to the smell? Ian Albert a law student, worked for a firm over the summer and one of the lawyers worked a divorce case that he knows as the praying hands case. K divorce is all but finalized but by the hand of God, there are a couple more issues to deal with. One of them was a picture of praying hands with like a rosary around it. Apparently the divorce was pretty messy and it all just culminated over this picture. Each client paid their lawyers hourly, hundreds of dollars, rates to try to figure out who got this one. Essentially worthless picture, like you could get this thing at any Christian bookstore or whatever. But this apparently went on for over a day, just two lawyers arguing and negotiating over a worthless picture where they both know it is purely out of spite and a waste of their time. I guess you don't bite the hand that feeds though. I can imagine the lawyers spending a great day together, having brunch, taking a walk, telling each other funny stories, feeding ducks, having dinner and then tossing a coin. Also not a divorce lawyer but my co-worker hit the screw over your soon to be ex-spouse jackpot. I have a co-worker who rented a pretty nice sized house for his wife and four children. He always talked about wishing he could own a house that big for his family but would need to settle on renting for now. He talked about how unbelievable the price was to rent a house that size and how nice the couple was that owned it. Well that couple who owned the house eventually started going through a messy divorce. The house was in the wife's name and she didn't want the husband to have it. She told my co-worker about the divorce and he thought she was going to say that he had to move because they needed to sell the house. Instead she asked if he wanted it. He said he was already getting it for a steal for what they charged for rent and couldn't possibly afford to buy it. She replied with I will take whatever you think you can offer and it's yours. The wife also knew that the husband wouldn't be cold hearted enough to fight it either since it wouldn't look good having a story about him kicking a family out of their home. TLDR. Wife basically gave house to tenants so husband couldn't get it in the divorce. Husband didn't want to look bad by fighting it and kicking a family to the curb. If I was in that husband's place, and it was a messy divorce, I probably wouldn't give a dang about the tenants, especially if they were obviously conspiring with the wife against me. My co-worker's wife left him in one of the worst ways possible. He was trying for a while to take her with him on a trip to Europe, Germany, England, Sweden, etc. She ultimately told him she didn't want to go because she missed her family on the east coast, so he goes without her. He's gone for about 2 weeks, and when he flew back his wife didn't pick him up from the airport. He had to call another friend, and when he finally got home his apartment was a wreck. His wife had taken over half their belongings, drained their joint bank account, taken his stash of tips, and driven the car back to the east coast. This was easily $10,000, more if you count the car. To make matters worse she wouldn't talk to him at all for a few months after this, only responding after being threatened by a judge with separation because she wouldn't take his name off the car. On top of that he found out later she had been texting an ex of hers and this guy actually flew out to drive with her back to the east coast. She was using a google phone and since my friend was paying for it he could go online to see the activity. Luckily he's very resilient, and after about a year things are going better than ever for him. 
Possibly the worst part though is that his now ex-wife moved back and is trying to talk to him again. None of us are letting him talk to her unless she pays for a counselor, which she should be able to afford. Not a lawyer either. My parents are going through a divorce currently and my dad put his hands on my mom which resulted in me calling the police and him going to jail because she wouldn't pay him for the word he had done on the house. Stuff like putting in a wood stove tiles floors etc. Mind you she had paid all of his expenses for 10 years because he is an alcoholic and refused to get a job. When he got out of jail he texted me saying that he was going to take my college fund and get a divorce lawyer so they'd get their assets split 50 stroke 50 since they're still considered married regardless of if she has paid for everything or not. So yay. He fricked his spouse and his kid over. Your mom better have cashed your college fund ASAP so he can't get it. Not a divorce lawyer, but this happened in NYC a number of years ago, and it's just too sweet not to include here. Some dentist or doctor on the Upper East Side and his wife were having a freaking nasty divorce, and she got their gorgeous Upper East Side brownstone, worth several million dollars, which pee him off royally, so the butthole went into the brownstone, turned on all the gas, let place fill with gas and blew it up totally destroying the building and killing himself in the process. Turned out the joke was on him, because the now empty lot was worth a crap ton more money than the house was how often is a buyer going to get a prime building lot for a new house on the upper east side of Manhattan. The lot was worth about double what the house was if I recall correctly, and the wife got it all. LOL. The most vicious yet strategic thing I've seen is going for a consultation at every lawyer within a 100 km radius, which forced the spouse to go to the nearest major city to get an attorney. All the other attorneys would have a conflict of interest because of the previous consultation. The spouse ended up paying out the butt for representation and had to drive over an hour for any meetings which means they had to take days off every time they had a meeting. Ian will but my uncle and aunt are divorcing at the moment. I would say these things just happen sometimes but given that she started spending a lot of time with and introducing my cousins to another man within weeks of giving notice and all this happened within a couple of months of his mum dying. Yeah, she's not held in high regard in our family at the moment. Anyway, she's going after his money. This includes everything from trying to claim some of his inheritance, not claimable in the UK, as it's awarded solely to those named on the will trying to claim assets that he had before they married like his tools again, not claimable as the predate the marriage and aren't a shared asset, and trying to value everything he'd like to keep as much higher than its actual value so he has to pay her more in order to keep it. The thing is my uncle isn't an unfair man. He actually offered her a very generous settlement which was more than she was entitled to but less than she asked for, which he rejected. A couple of months later, and armed with more news on her post-separation activities, he makes another offer which is lower than the first but still more than fair, which he rejected as well. But now my uncle is annoyed. His final offer is exactly what she's entitled to splitting assets down the middle and not a penny more. It's still a very comfortable sum, which she very rudely rejected. I didn't realize you could cram that many swear words into three sentences. I'm almost impressed. So he's taking her to court. The revenge is that at the moment she's not earning a penny because she doesn't work and is persona non. Crowder in both our family and hers by her own actions so lawyer fees are going to be very hard on her wallet and she might have to take a lower offer quickly before her own savings run out. By contrast my uncle has a decent job and the full support of siblings on both sides of the family so he can comfortably wait this out until she crumbles under the legal bills. She should have taken the first offer less freaking over the spouse than the kids, but, my mom used to work as a family lawyer, she's discussing custody with her client, who's the husband, because of many factors, he's not getting primary custody, she's trying to explain this to him but also that he'll still be able to see his kids and have a place in their life, that his role as a father is still important, she's talking about ways they can challenge the decision and what his recourse is, he's clearly not listening and apathetic, alright, he says, but do I get the motorcycle? She quit family law shortly after. Sounds like my dad. He was such a good dad. Model for fathers everywhere. He's dying of prostate cancer. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. My dad has been married to my mom for 37 years. He had a 5-5 five five year marriage before her which ended from an affair. This is how it went. 
My dad's wife at the time was having emotional problems or anxiety and started seeing a shrink. Weeks go by and she tells my dad she isn't happy and needs time to think and will be staying with her parents. Dad says okay I love you we can work through this blah blah. Anyways finds out from friends she is staying with her pharmacist. Also note my dad is still sorta fresh from Vietnam and was a ranger in the army. Old man goes sicko. Goes to the dude's house early in the morning. Knocks on the door. The pill giver answers and my dad physically ruins him. Driving away from the scene and passes the cops. Small town so my dad knows where they are going. Dad's like well crap I better go back or I'll just get leaving the scene too. Goes back and meets the cops and they go who are you? I'm the dude who beat the guy up. So he's really messed up we are calling an ambulance for him. Starts cuffing my dad. Why did you do that? My wife's in there. Uncuffs my dad and lets him go. At the time in Minnesota, you can sue somebody for having an affair with your spouse through the loss of love clause. So my dad did. One big time and with the winnings bought a brand new float plane. Named it Justice. I'm not entirely sure of my feelings on this. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.